Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we're taking a look at your higher self's message on what you're doing right and how to fulfill your wish. And to do this reading we will be pulling out three cards together. I already see the... Th ah, I see the three. One, two, and three. Let's find out what they are together. So for pile number one, you have the Eight of Cups. For pile number two, you have uh, the Devil card with Shadow. And for pile number three, you have the Ace of Pentacles. If you prefer to pick by crystals, let me add these now. But if you prefer to pick using your zodiac signs, you'll find a link to that, sorry, a timestamp to that down in the description box, which will take you straight to the part where we shuffle your zodiac signs and find out in which of the three parts they're going to fall under. All right, let me add your crystals and I will be back. There we go. So for pile number one, you have the beautiful Rhodonite. This is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, you have the beautiful Amethyst. And this is what your crystal looks like. As for pile number three, you have the beautiful green moss agate. And this is what your crystal looks like. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And this or these will be the piles for you here today. If you, you're drawn to several piles, in that case, your higher self may be wanting to point out several things to you uh, or several wishes. Uh, it, they could be different wishes in your life. They could be all pertaining to one grand wish that you have. You'll be the only one who understands what your higher self is talking about and how they're connecting the picture together for you whether it's just one wish or several and once you're ready you'll find the timestamps down in the description box click on your times and i will see you in your readings In a moment, I am about to assign different zodiac signs for each pile. And so if this is something that you do not prefer, please pause the video, take as much time as you need. And as mentioned, I will see you in your reading. But if you prefer to pick your piles using your zodiac signs, then in that case, my dear soul family, this specific part of the introduction has been created specifically for you. What I like to do is shuffle your zodiac signs really well in my bag. And once they are shuffled, I'll be drawing out four zodiac signs for each pile. Okay, I think we are now ready. Shuffle them really well. Let's draw out the first four signs for pile number one. Right, so for today's reading, one, two, three, and four, ah, this one, the signs are Sagittarius, Cancer, Aquarius, and Gemini. For pile number two, the signs are Capricorn, Pisces, Scorpio, and Libra. As for pile number three, the signs are 
Taurus, Aries, Leo, and Virgo. So, my dear soul family, these are the zodiac signs for today's reading and their association to each pile. Please feel free to pick your piles using your sun, moon, or rising. Uh, I highly recommend you check out the three. You might find them all in one pile or separated between two or maybe even the three. Alternatively, you can pick your pile or piles using other placements in your chart that you prefer. That's definitely that you can definitely do as well because a lot of you have been asking about this. Please feel free to pick your piles in the way that you prefer. These are all just different tools to help you intuitively pick your pile. Uh, in all cases, you will always know what your pile is. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at your higher self's message on what you're doing right, which we are going to be ooh, doing on its own. So one and two. And then we'll be taking a look at their message on how to fulfill your wish. And this is why we're dividing your reading into two parts. Your crystal for this reading is the beautiful Rhodonite. And your card is the Eight of Cups. We'll see how this generally fits into the two messages in today's reading. Oh, there we go. Uh, and your zodiac signs, in case you picked your pile using your zodiac signs, are Sagittarius, Cancer, Aquarius, and Gemini. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you guys, please don't worry about it. It's simply a way for others to pick their piles too. You know, some people love picking their piles using their intuition. Others love picking it using their zodiac signs. And so uh, they do not represent, of course, the general people watching this pile. Um, if they resonate with you, that's great. If they don't, please don't worry about it at all. They will not be um, the only signs for the people watching the pile. If, you're, if you picked your pile with your intuition, that's what you're meant to watch. Okay, so let's take a look first, putting this uh, on the side here, uh, your, your higher self's message on what you're doing right first. So you have unlikely ally. How interesting, right? <laughs> I wonder how this is going to fit into your reading. Let's keep it there. You have the ninth house with learning. Awesome. You know, the keywords on this card are philosophy, publishing, writing. Are you trying to write something? Discovery, law, exploring, travel, ethics, foreign countries, religion, higher education, spirituality, and wisdom. These are all, of course, keywords for the ninth house. Uh, house. <laughs> you have the sacral chakra with service. Okay, and look at that. The orange. Um, just like the sacral chakra card. That's in synchronicity. Definitely saying something. Right, we did shuffle your tarot cards. So let's pull out the tarot cards for this part of the reading. You have the Four of Swords. Hmm. Resting, resting. You have the Queen of Wands. Hmm. You have, look at this person hold, holding on to their, her family in the other life and her family in this life. Isn't that interesting? It's like she's like between worlds almost. You have the Hierophant. 
And can we fit one more card? I think... Could we? I think we can. Why not? If we push them like this, we definitely can. Okay. And you have the Ace of Swords. Look at the table. The knife is very consistent. One time on the butter, the other time on the jam, jam and butter. Hmm. What is this all saying? What does your higher self, what is your higher self's message on what you're doing? Right. The first impression with um, In Between Worlds here that I noticed, I feel like you're starting to to not be so connected um, to the 3D reality, if we can say. I feel like your soul is really starting to evolve, get stronger in specific, where you're, you're getting so attuned to seeing a higher perspective to your situations in general, to the different situations in your life. You're not so stuck on, uh, in fact, I think this is it because the Hierophant, um, especially in, uh, in Thoth, is the nail that pins this world and the other world, world uh, the spiritual world. So what, are, so what is the coincidence here, right? I feel like you're starting to understand, yes, you should live your 3D world and be connected to it, but you're starting to have a higher perspective on the real understanding and the real learning of life and spiritual growth. Um, it's like you realize that this is not the end-all be-all. You understand that you shouldn't be so angry about... Um, life maybe with the sacral chakra or too invested in something you are starting to also realize that um that there's more to life that there's more abundance out there or that you know that's not uh, the end of everything maybe you're not afraid of death anymore you know it's gonna differ from one person or the other listening but you are doing something you're shifting your mindset with the Four of Swords, your swords, you're finding rest because you're starting to understand that it's not all about what you're seeing, that there's more to what you're seeing. Uh, it's like more to how you deal with people, more of w who you are and what people are. Uh, you know, the, you're starting to see more. And perhaps why you have unlikely ally. Could this mean that perhaps you don't, um, you're not judging people anymore? And that's why you're starting to have more of an open mind on uh, how you deal with people who wouldn't usually be your allies if I were to put this together, I would say specifically for some of you, you're starting to have an open mind towards, ah, the map here. You see, in another reading, I noticed this map could mean different people from different parts of the world, one on one page and one on the other, different re religion, different uh, um, ideologies, right? Some people on one page, some people on the other. So maybe you're opening up your mind, especially with Sagittarius. You're expanding with Jupiter, right? You're expanding specifically your mind, your heart to... Even if you don't like other ideologies, even if you don't like how other people act, you're starting to understand that there is more to them, that there is soul, there is body. Uh, and you could be like... Maybe you don't like how they behave. Maybe you don't like what the ideologies and the things they've learned in life. Maybe you uh, 
uh, you don't like how they act in different things, but you're starting to open up your mind to realize that people are more than just their bodies and the programs and the things that they have. And yeah, you may, perhaps you're starting to connect to other different types of people. Maybe you have a more forgiving heart, especially with the Eight of Cups. You're walking away from maybe old ways of feeling of feeling things towards others. And you're expanding your mind uh, to seeing them in a different way. Almost like some mind gymnastics here with the caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland. Um, they used to confuse you, just like the caterpillar would confuse Alice with what he'd say and how he'd shift and surprise her with what he'd say. But at the end of the day, if you reflect on what he's saying, he he is expanding her mind. So I feel like you could have been with the Queen of Wands suffering specifically from maybe people in power or people using their power wrong or something or the other like that especially with the Red Queen here, <laughs> you know, people, um, egos, big egos, it could be people trying to push you to take your place with the Red Queen. Yeah, uh, suffering with some form of power that you didn't like, egoistical people, it could be pe narcissistic-like people, it could be people trying to take things from you, uh, people who are heartless that could be another thing with this red heart. And with the Queen of Wands, you're finding your your own power, your own groundedness here. Walking away from old feelings. I feel like um, you're resting more with the Four of Swords. Yeah, you're definitely... It's like you're almost con finding peace and you're in between worlds. You're getting there. I think your higher self is saying, my dear pile number one, you're getting there. You've been... You've been getting these confusing messages with the caterpillar just to expand your mind. You've been seeing these maybe type of people to expand your mind. And now you're in that phase of resting and that is activating your sacral chakra and is allowing you to enjoy life more. You know, you're, you're taking it slow now or you're in the process of between worlds, you're in the process of enjoying it more. Soon, these same people who you refused or did not like or triggered you or really angered you may just be people you deal with normally. As you expand your mind and maybe realize they're more to how they are acting. And so embracing different ideologies. It could be in anything in your life. Maybe this is like political with a map here. Different political agendas. Um, not just ego, you know. People who are so uh, aligned. No, who are so... Uh, they tag themselves with their political ideas or religious ideas or, you know. You know, this is our country. This is your country, you know. Um, I think you're more becoming more lenient and understanding breaking these boundaries and borders. And I think your higher self loves that about you because the mushroom allowed Alice to grow and become smaller whenever she wanted. She's learned to use the things around her. And so I think this means that you're starting to learn when to appear bigger, to stop people like that, when to um, humble yourself. I feel like you're getting, you're learning more tools to play that chess game of life when it comes to these types of people. And you're embracing everyone. I love that about you, pal number one. Good for you. Expanding your heart, moving away from old feelings. Maybe these old feelings that made you feel smaller or made you feel threatened or made you feel... Um, um, intimidated or maybe your reaction was to like take power whatever it was you're now resting within internally you're really resting and your sacral chakra is getting stronger by the day and you're taking it easy you are starting to enjoy this uh, the type of people who used to intimidate you aren't 
intimidating you that much anymore. So much so that you're moving towards, you know, actually dealing with them, maybe with proper boundaries and everything which you've learned. But, you know, you're not refusing them anymore. And perhaps it's so nice to see with your higher self here because I'm learning here. I know it, but seeing the readings like that, like confirms things. Um, you know that when they say we all should love each other and be one, that's how to do it. Being uh, at peace within um, allows us to accept each other and each other's journey deal with each other but with the proper boundaries and knowing how to strategically um, deal with it, right? So in all cases, I feel like that's what's going on in this part of your reading, being able to deal with others, align with them, accept them, understand them, but at the same time, you know, this is the pin between this world and the other world, understand that you are still in this 3D and learn the dynamics of how to set uh, the idea that I'm getting is boundaries. It could be something else uh, set, uh, you know, how to manage yourself, how to play that game, whatever this is in your situation. So, yeah, definitely resting. It's a new start in the mind with the Ace of Swords. Uh, you have more clarity on how to with the tea party to deal with others, speak with others, co cooperate, collaborate with others and enjoying it with this new way of thinking, accepting them. And because it was all about the heart with the Eight of Cups, moving away from emotions that made you feel smaller or bigger. And instead, using these strategies to either set boundaries or to collaborate with others. Yeah, that is exactly what I'm seeing here in your reading with what your, higher, what your higher self's message is when it comes to what you're doing right at the moment. So let's take a look at your higher self's message on uh, how to fulfill your wish. Right, so where's your uh, tarot deck? There we go. So, interesting, no help here, closed, okay? <laughs> and it is walking away from something, right? With the Eight of Cups. Interesting. Hmm. I have guesses, but I think I'll wait. Because the type of guesses I'm getting, maybe you are walking away from something. You're realizing that it's not serving you. Maybe your higher self is guiding you to uh, move away from something. All guesses. Let's wait. Ah, you have Juno with commitment. What? <laughs> right, so you have marriage, long-term relationships, fulfillment, compatibility, give and take, loyalty, partnerships, intimacy needs, soulmates, unions, and June. The month of June. Interesting. You do have a date here. And wow, you have the solar plexus with joy. Love this for you, okay? So how... To fulfill your wish. How to fulfill your wish. What is your higher self's message on how to fulfill your wish? Right. So you have the emperor. A lot of power here. Emperor, commitment, solar plexus. Wow. Okay. The five of wands. Hmm. The Fool card. Hmm, this must be inviting you to take on a new adventure that you're afraid to venture into. Because look, you have closed here. And then you have, you know, Alice following the rabbit into the rabbit hole. You know? And then you have the Six of Wands. Victory. Your higher self is showing you that you will be succeeding. As you venture into this unknown adventure or place. So what is your higher self saying here? I don't know. Is it saying like move away from something that's not working with closed here? How, could you maybe you've committed to something to someone depending on what your wish is. 
you've committed to a specific direction that's not working, have the courage to walk away from it. It has taught you something. It gave you some form of stability. It gave you skills. Ah, it's, it, it, this direction gave you tools to use, but maybe they weren't the right tools to use in that area. You were just developing muscle to use in another area. Why am I saying that? Because in Alice in Wonderland, they would use these um, animals. What are they called? Ugh, why do I lose names all of a sudden? <laughs> um, in their game of croquet, it's going to come to me. Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs. So we've seen um, the hedgehogs. We know that they used to use hedgehogs, but it's not right, right? <laughs> it's not right to use animals to play a game of croquet. And um, so I feel like your higher self wants you to expand your mind because it says closed here. Like to expand your mind to look in a different direction because you could be moving in a, you could be like committed to a specific direction that truly helped you use tools and learn some tools that you could use, that you will be using in another direction. Maybe you put a lot of time in this direction or with this person. You've put a lot of love into it. You've built a lot of things in this direction or with this person, depending on what this is. It's so difficult for you to say, to, to let it go, right? Even if it's not right, maybe it's not giving. You're very committed to this direction. And Eight of Cups is clear. You know, it is a card of walking away from something and perhaps it's very hard to walk away from something that is you've been committed to for so long and had so many hopes around it dreams built around it but i feel like your higher self is saying if it's not working why continue the losses Maybe you can use the things that have been created in this direction to your favor. Maybe you don't have to throw it all away. Especially with the, the solar plexus. You know, it's having the boldness to see things for what it is. And to have the joy <clears throat> to, <clears throat> excuse me, see another direction. I, I, I don't want to say hate, it's such a big word. But I really don't want to be someone who gives um, news that you may not like. But I also believe in giving the message as it is and in growth because perhaps um, here seeing closed in something you were so committed in could be devastating could be shocking to hear so i'm so sorry about that my dear pile number one but really your higher self is there for your higher good and if this part doesn't resonate with you please don't take it you know if there's not nothing to stop don't stop anything <laughs> you know but if this resonates with you, if what you're hearing part of you knows is right, then I would say your higher self is saying, perhaps think about what you have learned from this and take it as a, a, a strong ground with the emperor to use it in another direction, you know, use your cards wisely, your resources wisely, the things you have now wisely. Because it will take you to your real success. 
Maybe you were trying to create something, build something, move in a direction or be with a person and it's not working. Maybe it's for your own good that it's just closed like that. Maybe it's for your own good to walk away and that you're not walking away with nothing. You're actually walking away with so many cards of success for that new endeavor that you're going to get into. It's very hard to sometimes uh, admit that we may not have um, made the right decisions in the past, but don't blame yourself because if you were in the past and had you known that this wasn't the right decision, you would have taken it, right? So don't blame yourself. Also, realize that you did not come out of this with nothing. With the emperor, you came with solid ground that you can stand on. You've learned a lot of things. Maybe you have a lot of resources. Maybe you have a lot of cards because of this situation. Beco uh, things that you wouldn't have had had you not been in this situation. And perhaps this was uh, the foundation with the emperor that you would need to be able to venture into that new beginning. So I see your higher self saying, I know you can't see it now right? I know you can't see it now, but your wish may not be in this direction. Have the open mind with closed ear. Expand your mind to maybe walk away from what you see is just not working. How long are you going to move in that direction when you're starting to see perhaps that it doesn't make sense? And to have the boldness to realize, especially with the five of wands, that the struggle that you're going through is meant to show you something. Maybe you're not meant to do that because the thing I'm getting with the hedgehogs is that we're not meant to use them <laughs> as balls in a game of cro uh, croquet. So maybe that's just not meant to happen in this direction. And are you not supposed to get your wish? Of course you are. You've got the six of wands. You will... Get this wish with flying colors. It's going to happen for you. But maybe through another way or another road with this rabbit hole, another beginning, another journey with the fool. Follow a new, a new journey. Don't be afraid to be flexible and change directions. Don't be afraid to jump into a new rabbit hole. This time being equipped, having learned, having ha you have resources to do things in a different way. So perhaps this is saying cut the losses and, and move, you know, because the more you get into this, the more it's not working and the more you put your time, your effort, the very same th resources or things that are making it hard now to leave. And the more you invest in this, the more it's just more loss of time, more loss of uh, effort, more loss of money, maybe, depending on what this is. And be excited with the solar plexus, the joy in the solar plexus. Be excited into using whatever you have now to venture into something else. That's genuinely what I'm seeing here in your reading. And, you know, let's read what this joy card says in the guidebook with the solar plexus. Perhaps it's an extra message for someone here especially that I don't know, I don't have more information on exactly what this direction is so that I can extract more guidance for you. So I think the best way is to look into the guidebook and see what your guidance is here on the joy card. So it says, Dancing Daisy, right? Let's jump and see what happens. Do you see? <laughs> Do you see how the synchronicity sometimes really shocks me? <laughs> sometimes in a scary way. So the legend. We don't know how much... Sorry. We don't know much about Dancing Daisy. But we do know that she brings joy whenever she appears. Everyone who sees her becomes happier and more peaceful. Arguments sees as she comes close. People are even healed physically as a result of her presence. No one knows where she came from 
and just before the TV crew arrives, the the TV crews arrive, she leaves. Hmm. So inspiration, a dancing daisy represents a new joyous phase in life, and a significant change, such as a move, a new job, or a marriage. It's exactly what we've been seeing. <laughs> This is the moment after the leap. You may not see where you are going, but you will land on your feet. That's exactly what your higher self is saying here. It may be scary to look into a new direction, but you will, as you jump into that rabbit hole, you will land on your feet. That's the emperor. You've got a lot of groundness that will help you land right. So consider other options. You're more equipped than before. It looks like jumping to a new journey, but really with this type uh, of uh, equipment, um, you're ready. And f you know, the full card is a very interesting card because it has the same emp uh, so emperor, <laughs> has the same message as we've been seeing in the solar plexus and the emperor. You know, the fool is akin to a crazy person jumping from a high cliff. You know, it's a crazy move, but... Although they're venturing into a new environment and jumping up high, they're not someone who lacks skills. They're someone who knows how to swim. They're just making a huge jump, uh, taking a huge leap. So that if things don't go exactly as planned, at, le at least they know how to swim. They know how to take care of themselves. It's not like they're jumping and they don't know how to take care of the situation. So that's what I'm seeing here. You are equipped, you've been trained through that process. Look in another direction, my dear pile number two, when it comes to your wish. Have the open-mindedness to look into a new direction. Although it could be really hard on your heart, on your mind to think of something crazy like that. Don't label yourself as having failed. Don't label yourself as, you know, don't be sad over the the effort that you've put in, nothing is lost with the emperor. It just built a great foundation for you to, if you have the open mind, to venture into something else that will create that success for you. And my dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see in your reading uh, as your message from your higher self when it comes to what you're doing right and how to fulfill your wish. I truly hope you've enjoyed your reading. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please also consider becoming a member of the Solar Family memberships. If you wish to do so, there is a join button below this video. If you do not see it, there's I put a link to the memberships. First thing in the description box to make it easy for, for you to find. This way you become a um, part of the Soul Family family memberships as mentioned. It's a great way to support me if you do so wish to, if you do uh, so, this, if you decide to do so, <laughs> you will get a badge with a white feather whenever you comment uh, under any video or even live stream. Uh, and also there are fun stickers coming up. Wait for that. I'm so excited to re release them for you. You can use them in the chat, the comment section and everything. My dear, thank you so much, by the way, for supporting me in any way. Even a sweet comment means the world to me. I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Sending you the best of luck and whatever you're trying to achieve here, you will achieve it. You have the six of wands. You're going to be successful. And this was your reading, my dear pile number one, sending you so much love and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi pile number two, welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the beautiful amethyst and your card, whoa thanks, okay I got it, <laughs> is the devil card, uh, specifically in this deck called Shadow. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case only. The zodiac signs for this pile are Capricorn, Pisces, Scorpio, and Libra. Please note, I feel this one, that if these are not your zodiac signs, don't worry about them. Uh, this is simply a way for others to pick their piles. Uh, some people prefer to pick their piles with their intuition. And we are creating space for those who prefer to pick their piles. Uh, using their zodiac signs to do so as well. If they resonate with you, awesome. It's an extra confirmation. If they don't, please don't worry about them at all. 
uh, they will definitely not re be representing everybody watching this pile because uh, people pick their piles using their intuition or their zodiac signs. All right, so I believe we picked out the your oracle cards. As you can see, we're dividing your reading today into two parts. The first part has to do with your higher self's message on what you're doing right. And the second part will be your higher self's message on um, how to fulfill your wish. Okay, so your deck shuffled. These two came out. That's why I left them there. Let's first take a look at the first part of your reading, which is your higher self's message on what you're doing right. So... We always get guidance on your higher selves on what you want to adjust. It would be nice, I thought, to take a look at what you're doing right. That's also good information, right? So you have conjunction, which is union in astrology. So you have joint forces working together, merging, enhancing, empowering, strengthening, combined energy, linked lack of individuality. All right. So that is conjunction and you have unfinished. Okay. <laughs> Interesting card. It does look like a shadow there, doesn't it? Okay. And, oh, hey, could the union here be talking about, uh, Union between light and shadow, the integration between light and shadow, right? You have the sacral chakra. Sorry, my apologies. I don't know why I sometimes do that. I want to say the solar plexus chakra with prayer. Right, let's take a look at your tarot cards. So you have the three of pentacles, union, right? you have can you see your deck my apologies there we go you have the seven of pentacles oh, does seem like they're working hard to build something patiently that could be you working with your shadow very well with you uh, to make something grow or to grow for you to grow integration right the hermit this is definitely internal work with the hermit here this is not about working with others this is working with yourself working with your shadow good job you must have been shedding light on your shadow you know you had the courage to to see it which is not easy and you have the two of pentacles, right? Sorry. I feel your higher self is saying you have been someone who's very aware of uh, what your shadow is. You've worked hard. Do you see the stairs? You've took it. You've taken it step by step, uh, and. You weren't afraid to get deep into it. In fact, you know, it's a bold move <laughs> to choose the devil card, which means that you're truly someone who's not afraid of looking at their shadow, of saying, hey, if this is my message and I'm drawn to it, let me click on it, you know? It really speaks of who you are. And obviously, this is what your higher self is saying. Is saying. They're congratulating you for all the hard work that you have done, the step by step, because that's not easy, you know? Um, there were times with the two of pentacles with, uh, in which you didn't know what to do. Should I go this way? Should I do this way? You were trying to find your balance. And look at that. You've really integrated so much. You've grown so much, my dear pile number two. Are you totally there yet? Not yet. There's more work to be done. But with the three of pentacles, you've got a plan. You are maybe equipped with good information. You are very open-minded to, to take a look at the light, to take a look, at, to shed the light. Because the Three of Pentacles, if you look at the original Rider Waite Smith, there is someone shedding the light on the plan. You know, you're, you're, you're 
uh, very open to learn. And so it is in part also a card of learning. You are open to learn. You're open to look at the details. You're, you're there. You're working with your guides, with the three of pentacles. You know, uh, you're making sure you try as much as possible to do the right thing. I feel like I want to clap for you from my heart. <laughs> Good job, pile number two. You've done so much. And like I said, are you there yet? It's unfinished. You're not there yet. But you've integrated so much. You've grown so much. And, um, you know, sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You're getting there. I feel like your higher self is telling you it's normal for you to hit sometimes and miss sometimes because you're figuring it out. But you're getting there. You're on the right track. Uh, you've also figured out your uh, illusions with the devil card. You, you're like at a point where you're able to distinguish whether this is your shadow speaking or not to a great extent. And, you, and the awesome thing that I see here is that you're not ashamed of your shadow anymore, which is awesome. Maybe you weren't ever ashamed, but I feel through this card, it's like you've harbored it, you've treated it like your own child. There's nurture going on here. You're like, it's okay, that's my shadow. Uh, and uh, it's fine for it to be here for now. I'm figuring out how to deal with it and not push it away, not hate it. There is, it's like... Um, it really feels like you're letting it, you're treating it kindly, <laughs> you know? Um, it's your shadow, it's there, you've accepted it, and you're like, whenever it shows up, you're like, okay, it's not a part of me that I am refusing or hate. I know it's a part of me that I'm meant to integrate, work on. So good job there. You're, you're really doing it in such a balanced way. You're working together with your shadow and not against it. Uh, and that's the real integration. You're like, okay, how is it empowering me? But how is it going wrong? How can I heal the maybe the limiting beliefs that this shadow has? And you're sp it's sprouting with the Seven of Pentacles. All that hard work is starting to show in your life. And I bet you can already see that. There's no way you can't see that with the sprouting of the Seven of Pentacles. There's more to go, but you can at this point see the light at the end of the shadow. Maybe you're still navigating through it, still trying to figure it out where you're like hitting the ball most of the time. Sometimes it misses and you go, oh, where did I go wrong here? <laughs> uh, and you're getting there with the prayer. Your hope of healing that part of you is nearly there. You can almost see the other side, although the glass is cracked, meaning it's not totally fixed yet. Not 100% clear, but you can see. You can see the other side. Uh, you're tasting the bitterness of going through this tunnel to the other side. It is bitter. It's not easy. Dealing with shadow is not easy. But you're patient with the seven of pentacles. You are holding on to that prayer. Holding on to... You're someone, obviously, who's like... Um, you, it's not like sometimes you work on it and sometimes you don't work on it. You're, you're holding on to that. You're like, I got this. I'm going to make it work. So love to see this for you. What an awesome pile. <laughs> you are not afraid to see what's wrong. What is the shadow showing you? Ah, so that's what it's showing me. Good. Um, obviously, I can't uh, fix it all in one go. That's fine. I'm going to take it step by step to fix it. I'm getting there. It's okay when I miss sometimes. So, yeah, I feel like your higher self is telling you, great job. You have been doing an awesome job. You're getting there. Maybe it's not there yet. You can see it. They can see it. But you're nearly there. It's like you're on your last piece to fully understanding this, healing this, integrate it, and um, make it work to your favor. And I feel like it is your wish, your desire to achieve something, be something you want, something like that. You have a prayer that is really holding all of this together. You have your eyes on your goal. And um, with the soul, with the sacral, sorry, solar plexus chakra, you are really... Um, it's allowing you to bring that power because of that strong desire 
and positivity to get there. It's that energy that is pushing you forward. You have your eyes on the goal and you're like, I'm getting there. I can see it. I'm getting there. And it's taking you places. Your higher self is saying you're nearly there. You're nearly finished. Continue to do what you're doing. You're on the right track. You're taking the right steps. It's only a matter of effort and time. That's it. Because you can already see the light at the end of the tunnel. Continue to take your steps. Each step will guide you to the next step. And before you know it, you'll find yourself there, my dear pile uh, number two. So nice to see for you. So it's awesome to see uh, a reading about integrating the shadow. Good job. <laughs> so this was the first part of your reading of what your higher self's message is when it comes to what you're doing right. Now, the second part of your reading pertains to your higher self's message on how to fulfill your wish. Let's get straight into that. So you have the seventh house with partnerships. For some of you, it could be a relationship wish. Not necessarily, by the way, but just a, just a quick, uh, um, what, what can I say? A quick impression. So it says marriage, relationships, friendships, business partners, contracts, agreements, joint, uh, joint endeavors, sharing, negotiations, cooperation and relating. It could be you wanting to work and collaborate with another company. Uh, you trying to make some form of agreement. This is all seventh house. Okay. You have the chariot. So nice to see. Okay. Also, by the way, the dolphins, they're sometimes seen as a symbol of twin flames if you believe in twin flames or your soulmate. So there is another seven here reminding me of the seventh house as the chariot, of course. So it could be for a lot of you a relationship wish, not necessarily. This is a general reading and it's your message. So please take it how it resonates with you. And you have the root chakra with perfection. Can see somebody's inner child within them. Huh, it says stay on target. How interesting. Okay, let's take a look at your tarot cards. Let's shuffle them one more time. What is your higher self's message on how to fulfill your wish? So, you have the King of Swords. Blue butterflies are appearing quite regularly on this channel the last few days, I'm noticing. You have, which talks about getting something unique, in my opinion, because blue butterflies are very rare in nature. So, it's like you're getting something very rare. You're going to receive something very rare. Temperance. Step. Yeah. Uh, it talks about uh, one foot in the water, one foot in the soil. You have the Knight of Swords. Action of Swords. Stay on target. Action. I think your higher self is talking about you taking a, a action, taking a step towards something. Following something or leading something. Not sure yet. Wow, and you have the Nine of Cups. It's a wish fulfillment card at the end of the reading. What are the odds? So this is a confirmation from your higher self that if you do take the right steps, uh, you will be fulfilling your wish. That is going to happen. And again, the golden egg is a symbol of something being super unique, right? So I think you are going to be in a unique situation where you get exactly what you want. So, seventh house. This could be a wish pertaining to people or joining ventures with something or someone. Coming together with someone or something. Hmm. Not sure what this wish is. I think let's start with the root chakra card. How about 
what is perfection here? Let's take a look at what the guidebook quickly says about this. Get an idea. Perfection. Righteous raspberry. I have the same high standards for myself as I have for others. Stay on target. I think your higher self is saying when it comes to your wish, don't lower your standards. This is what you want. This is what you get. In fact, that's why you're getting unique all over your reading. Don't lower your standards to have a taste of this wish. Stay on track because you deserve to get that unique wish. Don't feel like uh, you're not going to get it or, you know, maybe you should be a bit more flexible to get some part of it. That's very strong here for you. And there is a strong advice on taking action and being disciplined, moving in the right direction to make this wish happen. As you take action, I think what's preventing you from taking steps, bold moves, manifesting this with the temperance is perhaps you are feeling like you may not get it. You seem to have such a huge wish. And maybe your inner child feels like something like maybe you don't deserve it. Maybe you can't get it. Maybe you're not going to get it the way you want. Something like that. But if you take a look, the emphasis here in the temperance card is on the square and the triangle, which of course shows in... Uh, symbolizes how we're bound by the laws of the earth with the square, but also the nature with the triangle. Remember that it, you are not always seeing everything in the 3D. There are other laws that may be invisible to the untrained eye. The law of attraction, the law of assumption, the, the law of the mind. There's so much uh, so, if we take a, law, a look at the laws, it, it always reminds us of how things reflect depending on how we think about them, what we believe about them. So, and you know, feathers, they represent spiritual messages, right? So, I feel like your higher self is reminding you not to just depend on what you're seeing in your physical world. Remember, there are far greater laws as well that are equally important. Haven't you heard of people who didn't have the resources to do something, but with a hit of luck they did it? And haven't you wondered how someone was able to achieve something when they didn't have this or that, how someone was able to teach themselves all of this knowledge when they didn't go to this university. We've seen it all, even in our own worlds. Sometimes we have it all and we still don't make it. And sometimes we have nothing and we're surprised <laughs> how we got it. And sometimes we get both the resources and the luck and it's working for us. Sometimes you know what I mean. Sometimes we don't have both. There are laws. And it's not just what we're seeing. And what I feel like your guides, oh, sorry, my your guides, maybe also your guides, but I mean your higher self is trying to uh, want you to follow that along. One foot is solid on ground, presenting the earth, but don't remember to take other actions, to take steps into the spiritual realm as well. Use both feet. Take the necessary actions. But as you're taking the necessary action, don't lower your standards. Don't uh, go about feeling like, oh, how is this going to happen for me? Remember to take the spiritual steps needed, the yin and the yang, right? You need both to make something happen. So with the action of swords, you know, it's the fastest moving knight in the deck, the knight of swords. You will, as if you just take the necessary beginning steps, you'll be moving as faster than you ever think. 
towards that wish fulfillment, toward that dream that you have in mind. Just take the steps and stay on target as your higher self is showing you. Let your spirituality lead you, which is your beliefs. Because if you change your mind, it is all of the... Change your mind, especially with the Knight of Swords. It's the mind that moves everything along after, after it. It's how you think about things. It's your thoughts that drive your frequency. So your higher self is saying you will come together with your wish, whatever it is, whether it's rom romantic in nature, whether it's you join co-joining together with something, coming together with your wish also. That's going to happen. Don't lower your standards. And most importantly, let your mind, your spiritual mind lead. I'm going to achieve this. The question is how. I'm going to get this. The question is how. So let your belief, your full belief that you deserve it and that you're going to get it. Mind, mind, the swords. Be the leading. Um, be the frequency leading this wish. Because if you align with it in frequency, with your thoughts, you are going to make it come true exactly. Now, we did say one foot in the earth, one foot in spirit, right? With the spiritual laws, the laws of the earth and the laws of the nature. We did talk about the frequency of the mind. We did, we did focus a lot on the spiritual part, which is all over your reading, right? It talks about how the mind needs to align with the spiritual laws, the natural laws. But also with all of the swords, especially with the king of swords, your higher self is saying you also need to align with it with action. You know, the swords are masculine energy, moving with great force, being disciplined, uh, moving with force towards your goals, being consistent. King of swords shows that you want to be strategic in what you're going to do to get that wish now that you absolutely believe that it is that unique wish is meant to come true for you. Now that you know that it is going to happen for you, knowing that, what different actions would you take to make that wish come true? Because taking action with half belief is far different from the sort of actions you take when you know it's going to happen for you. And so your higher self is saying, really, when you align mentally with the right frequency, you get everything you want and what you wish. These are the laws. And so if you align with you, not, um, what did we say? Not settling. getting exactly what you want and knowing that it's going to happen. What course of action with that type of thought would you take? And what would you do differently? How would you act differently? And how would you plan differently to make that wish come true? These are the two forces that will move you forward exactly towards your wish. My dear pile number two. Uniting with your wish. And I don't want to say any more towards that because this is exactly what I am seeing here when it comes to your higher self's message on how to fulfill your wish. And they are asking you to rethink this from this perspective and you shall receive. My dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see for you when it comes to your messages on what you're doing right and um, how to make or how to fulfill your wish. This was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Also, please uh, join the Soul Family memberships. Uh, you'll find the join button below this video, uh, which you can click on to take you to, to join. 
Uh, or if you don't see it, I did leave a link first thing in the description box, which will make it easier for you to click on and join. It's really a great way to support me and you become part of the Soul Family memberships. Uh, you get a badge with a white feather whenever you comment uh, in the comment section or in chat with, in, during the live streams. And there are also stickers coming up, fun stickers coming up that you can use also in the comment section. I can't wait for them to come out. And thank you in all cases, in any way you support me, uh, even with a kind comment, like I always say, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. Wishing you the best of luck. <laughs> Love your higher selves messages to you. My dear pile number two, this was your reading and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the green moss agate and your card is the ace of pentacles. If you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Taurus, Aries, Leo, and Virgo. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you guys, please don't worry about it. I remember it's a general reading. It's a way for others to pick their piles too. Some people prefer to pick their piles using their intuition and others prefer to pick it using their zodiac signs. Um, if they resonate with you, awesome. If they don't, there's no way everyone clicking on this pile will only be <laughs> uh, in within these four zodiac signs only. So remember that. And as you know, today we're taking a look at your higher self's message on first what you're doing right, which is the first part of your reading here. And then we'll be taking a look at their message on how to fulfill your wish. We usually do higher self readings on guidance, what you aren't doing right so you can adjust it. I felt it was time to also see what you're doing right. That's equally important. So that's why we're doing this today. Let's take a look at the first part of your reading on what you are doing right. So you've got the 12th house, really nice, with the keyword subconscious, Pisces and Uranus, and you have all things hidden, limiting beliefs, self-sacrifice, healing, reading, closure, uh, spirituality, uh, isolation, sorrow, intuition, dreams, unseen realm. Guys, um, this reminds me of, what are they called? Uh, optical illusions. Because as I, I was reading, one was going around in one direction and the other was, you know, just like an optical illusion. And I remember with optical illusions, whoops, uh, they work because of how the mind works. We have learned that things work in a specific way. And so uh, understanding our mind and how they work within the mind's understanding of things, it's the reason why these optical illusions work. Not that they're moving or anything, uh, but these optical illusions work because when we create them, we just... Uh, understand how the mind works and this is why this is a proof that not everything that we're seeing is 100 percent correct and, and that um, the mind just learned to adapt to our world to understand our world and this is how it is making us see things so i would say this keyword subconscious is very fitting in your reading this time Let's see why and how. Right, so you have the key, okay? Perhaps you've learned that not everything is as it seems, maybe. You have the root chakra with insecurity. Are you seeing your cards? I'm so sorry. There we go, you got insecurity. This was your card, the key, and this was the 12th house. My apologies with that. All right. So now let's pull out your tarot cards. So can you see your cards? There. You have the nine of swords. Ah, now that's an interesting perspective. 
it was your mind that was affecting your stability, your groundedness with the root chakra. You've learned that it was your mind that was creating insecurities. You've learned that the mind is the key, is in fact your eye. How interesting. Okay, you have the page of wands and you've got a hold on that. In fact, the pages are the learners, right? So you've learned to see it for what it is and you learned not to always trust what it's showing you. And thus, you've learned to be more grounded, okay? And look at the page of wands holding the wand. Ah, oh, no, that's the ace of pentacles. My apologies. All right, you've got the, qu sorry, the king of wands. The king of wands. The devil, which fits perfectly in what we've been talking about. The devil card is illusions, right? Illusions that kept you entrapped when you never really are entrapped okay so your higher self is obviously talking about how you were able to see the hidden things all hidden things the limiting beliefs obviously how you were self-sacrificing and that is a big thing just to see it is everything because now even when you see the optical illusions right <laughs> you don't necessarily need to follow them anymore I feel like you're now holding the key. You can see things moving. You can see things happening. That is still yet to heal. But you're not responding to it anymore. Knowing that it's an illusion. You know what this reminds me of? This pile reminds me of Beautiful Mind. You remember that movie? He had a beautiful mind. was super intelligent. And it was him believing these imaginary friends the these illusionary friends that kept him acting in a way that harmed himself and harmed his loved ones hindering him from pursuing his goals and only when he understood that these are illusions they're not real does he see them yes he sees them but he doesn't follow them anymore he stopped talking to them and eventually they stopped interacting with him and pushing him to do things as they used to they are there in the journey but they stopped talking to him and he started living life normally so i feel like this idea is an analogy to what we're seeing here you've learned to see the limiting beliefs but not necessarily pursue them and because these limiting beliefs used to really torture you with the Nine of Swords. They used to make you cry. They used to stress you. They used to cause anxiety with the Nine of Swords. And there is a new page here of you seeing it. Taking a grasp on the situation. You've, situation. you've learned, and that's the key, that they, for now, exist. They're moving around you. But you don't have to necessarily follow these limiting beliefs. And thus bringing you great power, a beginning of you uh, getting great power. And I want to tell you a surprise here that your higher self wants to show you. We got the page and we're jumping right to the king of wands in the same suit. We skipped the knight of wands. We skipped the queen of wands. There's a jump. And so this is saying you're, this is going to help you take a leap when it comes to your insecurities or your fears, the things in all cases that used to shake your ground, that used to hinder your stability. You've seen that now, and that's the key with the red, the groundedness, the key to you holding your ground and you holding your power. You are going to be experiencing soon a new beginning when it comes to your power. There's a huge shift in power and the kings are balance. So I see you holding the key to your power now. And with you following that understanding, there's a new beginning within you. How you think, how you feel. There's a cleanse in how you think, how you feel. That will... Uh, 
Heal your root chakra with the Ace of Pentacles, the groundedness, the earth, that will make you grounded and thus leading to great power all of a sudden. So that which used to uh, cause insecurity, shakiness, fear, is no longer going to be there. And you're learning to hold your power, not let it be taken away from you by situations or others, or more importantly, your limiting beliefs. And your higher self is saying, congratulations, that's awesome work. You're really holding the key here. And uh, very soon, you're taking a leap. It's not going to be a gradual process. It's going to be a huge jump to you all of a sudden finding your power that nobody can shake you off, uh, off of again. Very nice to see for you, uh, my dear pile number one. How awesome. And so you're changing as a person. You're finding your ground. You're healing emotionally and mentally. Uh, and what a leap that is. Your higher self is saying, continue to hold on to this understanding. And soon, this limiting belief that is torturing you will simply dissipate. And that's what is going to lead to but remember it's a choice you're now learning if you continue to hold on to this key this is what is going to happen okay so now let's take a look at and you know the 12th house shows that you are really on track in your spiritual journey you're on track to transcend uh, you're on track to really healing something very important something key to your mind, body, and soul. It will affect everything else, this thought and this shift. This limiting belief, once it's fully out, will change how you feel, think, and behave. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at your higher self's message on what you're doing right, let's now take a look at the second half of the reading uh, with your higher self's message on how to fulfill your wish. So, you have the opposition. Look at that disco ball. It looks really nice. <laughs> Ooh, confrontation. Yes, of course. So, the key words here are reflecting, mirroring, seeking balance, tests, interaction, push-pull dynamic. Ah, oh, this is really confrontational. Internal conflicts, uncertainty, un uh, sorry, wavering, acknowledgement, respect. Whoa, big energy there. All right. You have the third eye chakra with mysticism. And you got stay on target. Interesting. Which pile did this pop up in? I th pile number two. If you were drawn to pile number two, I highly recommend it. So it says stay on target. And let's pull out your tarot cards. Give it another shuffle. Ah, and ask, what is your higher self's message on how to fulfill your wish, please, for pile number three? All right. So, your can you see your deck? If we put it up there, yes. Your cards are... Whoa, love that for you. The Ten of Pentacles. If you stay on target, you'll be fulfilling more than you even wished for with the Ten of Pentacles. Tens are excess of an energy. And you have the Hierophant. You have, whoa, the Nine of Pentacles. This, do you see? It's all about wish fulfillment here. <laughs> Left, right, and center. You have the Page of Cups. And you have the Two of Wands. Since I naturally said left, right, and center, this means that the Hierophant is also talking about your wish committing to you. That it's going to happen for you. There is an, an insistence that, see, the gesture, what you're hoping and wishing for will pop into your life, will will manifest into your reality. So, 
What is your higher self's message here? It's really funny. Most of your cards are talking about your higher self's promise that it will come true. The two of wands is a card about planning, the mind, or envisioning even. So I feel like your higher self is saying, keep your eye on the goal. Keep your eye on the goal. Don't take your eyes off of that goal. And although with the opposition, it seems like everything is against you now, that's not going to be the reality. I, I highly recommend you check plan number two in that case because I won't spill the tea on what happened there, but there's a similar message here. It's unbelievable. Remember with the third eye chakra that there is more than what your eyes are seeing. There, there's a third eye with the third eye chakra. There are things that happen beyond what your physical eyes are seeing, which is what we saw in the 12th house, right? There's more than what we are seeing. There's the physical eyes and there's more to the world. So although things look like they are in opposition right now, like maybe you have your cards stacked against you at the moment, that does not mean that you're actually seeing everything. Imagine, for example, that you're in class and your teacher is giving each one a different topic on, um, on what research they're going to be doing in the weekend. Let's say you really hoped your teacher would give you the history research, for example, because that's what you're good at. You know you're going to ace that test since you love history so much. Um, and... Each one gets a file to see what topic they're going to be researching. And you're really hoping you get that history research because you've got a lot of homework, for example. And, you know, if you get that history thing, you're just going to finish it in 10 minutes and you get time to study or to finish the rest. Otherwise, it's going to be a really stressful weekend, right? So each one gets their file and you randomly open a page and you see a uh, some biology figures and you're like your ha your heart sinks and you're like no I'm getting a biology research and you get so disappointed and you think things just went the opposite way uh, let's say biology is the last thing you wanted <laughs> and you think there is no way now the weekend is gonna go the way you planned or hoped or wished for because if you had you gotten the history research, the weekend would totally go your way. You can finish that research in 10 minutes. You can do finish your homework in one day and you get the next day off. For example, to go to that trip that you wanted to go to. So you're really disappointed at this point. Your heart sinks. It's even worse than you thought because you don't like biology and you know that's going to take time. So you're getting one page that's giving you this totally false idea about how the weekend's going to go. But let's say you go back home, you calm down, or you're like skimming through it in the car now that your heart is heavy and you think it's not going to go your way. You're skimming through this and it's all history. And you're like, what? What? Is this history or biology? And, you, and you're like frantically looking at the pages and it's all history. And you're like, oh, is this history? What's the, what's the heart doing there? And it turns out this is just a diagram of a historical figure that you know that discovered something that you didn't know they discovered. And you're like, oh, that's just like an example of the things this person discovered. Oh my God, it's a history. <laughs> it's a history research. I got this. Okay, okay, I'll just read that extra part. And I got this. And suddenly... In a blink of an eye, your weekend changes right in front of your eyes. And it doesn't turn out that things are opposing to you. You just had a limited view, your eye, physical view, on how things were going to go down. And you realize, hey, this whole situation is totally different than what I thought. Maybe things unveil to you in your life. You thought things were one way and then you realize you're so blessed because they're not. And maybe that little view 
was like to push you to plan things better, to do things in a different way. Had you known maybe that you were free, you could have made a lot of plans with your friends before going home, thus ruining the weekend for you. Maybe no one dared to uh, ask you to do things or to go out with them. And, you know, whatever other pressures that could have happened that the universe was protecting you from. So all I'm trying to say is things seem to be in opposition to you right now with regards to your wish. That does not mean that you're seeing everything now with the third eye chakra, with mysticism. There's mysticism. There is more to what's going on that your eyes can see at the moment. And not only are you going to get some of your wish, you're going to get exactly what you're hoping for. In fact, when we talk about exactly, the Ten of Pentacles shows you're going to get more than what you have dreamed for. And you're going to get to keep it with the Hierophant. It's not going to be a fleeting moment. It's not going to be a little bit of your life. You're going to keep this wish. And you're going to live and be committed to this wish. And this wish committing to you. Um, it's going to be part, a great part of your life. What you're hoping for now so much, although it's not really visible, will appear in your life. And so your higher self's message with regards to this wish, is never keep your eye off the target. Continue to envision this. Continue to know that you're going to get it. Because the key is how you see things with your third eye, not necessarily with your real eyes at the moment. If your physical eyes cannot see it, at least keep your third eye on target. And it's almost like, see and you shall believe. As within, so without. In fact, with mirroring here, what you see will reflect back to you. And when we, see what, when we say what we see, we're obviously talking about the third eye chakra here, right? Because when we say what you see, you shall receive is obviously talking about what you're envisioning and how you're seeing the situation and not necessarily what you are, well, how you're envisioning the situation, not necessarily ab about how you see it in the physical world here. And that's exactly the learning lesson that your higher self wants you to grasp. It's the most important tool you will have that you can rely on with the Jed here, the backbone. It's the backbone of getting your wishes coming true that your higher self wants you to learn. See things in the way you want them to be. And thus you shall receive. And my dear pile number three, this is exactly what I see in your reading. You might get more information about your wish in pile number two if you feel drawn to it. This was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I just, uh, I was hearing something. I don't want to forget it. Keep your eye on the goal. Yeah, I did say it a lot. I just heard it. I thought I should say it again <laughs> as I was talking. Uh, so yeah, please subscribe. Also, don't forget to join and become part of the Soul Family member, uh, for Soul Family memberships. If you decide to, you'll find the join button right under the video. I also left a link first thing in the description box to make it easy for you to find. It allows you to um, support me if this is something that you would love to do. I would truly appreciate it. You get a badge with a white feather and whenever you comment, um, that shows up whenever you comment on the channel or in the live streams. There's also stickers coming up. And in all cases, whether you choose to support me or not, you know, a kind comment, uh, a like, your support means the world to me. Thank you for everything you choose to do. It means so much to my heart. I'm wishing you the best of luck in your journey. May, may all of your dreams come true. <laughs> this was your reading and my dear pile number three. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.